It's Wednesday, November 30th. Tonight, an ancient agriculture technique could revolutionize the future of farming. Next on North Carolina, now. Quality public television is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mitchell Lewis. Thanks for joining us. Tonight on North Carolina Now, we'll get a preview of an annual holiday tradition, the Carolina Ballet's production of The Nutcracker, which takes the stage this weekend. But we begin with a look at a new trend in agriculture. What if an ancient farming technique could help solve a very modern problem? An eastern North Carolina, Carolina farm is leading the way in testing a centuries-old soil treatment that can reduce the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. It's called biochar, and proponents say it can not only help fight climate change, it can revolutionize farming around the globe. Kelly McHenry visited the North Carolina Farm Center in Bladen County to find out what it's all about. This is biochar, basically homemade charcoal. You throw organic matter into an oven and burn it. But the secret is to not let much oxygen in, so you're really baking it. The result is a substance that works like magic on plants. Just pure biochar has better results in uh, North Carolina crops than commercial fertilizer. You mix it with turkey litter or hog waste and you are really getting a bump up in productivity. North Carolina Farm Center founder Sharon Valentine first discovered biochar on a trip to Peru, where residents have been growing food in terraces for centuries on land with notoriously bad soil. And I asked the natives what was the secret out there, and they said biochar, terra preta. The Portuguese call this terra preta, or black soil. Not only does it make plants grow bigger, but it decays very slowly. So the carbon that's in here, if you put it into the soil, will stay there for over a thousand years. So biochar is nature's carbon capture machine. Biochar is a really crucial technology because it actually pulls carbon out of the atmosphere and deposits it in the soil where we really need it, where it enhances the soil's fertility, um, and it sequesters carbon in the soil. Biochar works like a sponge by trapping nutrients in water to give plants more time to absorb them. That's especially beneficial for eastern North Carolina's sandy soils. In 2009, the U.S. Department of Agriculture gave the farm a grant to test biochar on that sandy soil. The first field has no biochar, the next field has a ton of biochar per acre, the next field two tons per acre, and what we've done is we've separated the front with absolutely no fertilizer, halfway down is a super soil, then chicken litter, and at the very end we have a commercial fertilizer. The harvested crops are weighed to see how productive the biochar soil is. I'm not even a farmer and I can see this looks a little spindly. As you go over, it looks a little fuller. Absolutely does. And Absolutely does. you're going to assume that that's because of the biochar. That would be the assumption. But <laughs> again, we want to get the data in. And we're excited about it. And we think that's it. But uh, you know, we want to make sure that, that we're providing proper. Accurate information. That's right. Yeah, I understand. Here, just drenching the root system. Desmond is also testing soil microbes designed to boost production even more. In the fall, soldiers from Fort Bragg help plant vegetables in soil with added microbes that eat the biochar and turn it into water and sugar. And there has been no water on this at all for a month and it's these plants are surviving, they're coming up, they're doing really well out here. So we're real excited about the project. But with all the scares about food additives, is biochar safe? Absolutely. Because biochar is inert carbon, it is very safe to put in the soil. There are some people who might want to make biochar out of tires. That's not biochar. 
Um, so we do have to pay close attention to the feedstocks and how clean they are. Bonnet says independent food safety tests show biochar is safe to use for growing food. And their hope is to spread the wealth by having Fort Bragg soldiers take it with them on deployment. To teach the people um, to grow vegetables, to be self-sustaining, feed their families. One hurdle is coming up with a portable and dependable biochar oven. They're still working out the kinks on this one and are looking for improvements. Oh, it is a playground for entrepreneurs, my dear. You know, if you want to become rich and famous, we have a sector to get into. But Valentine says if they can make a dependable machine, soldiers can export biochar ovens across the globe. We can put a farm in a container and take it to Iraq or Afghanistan and you would have a one acre farm coming in in a container. As an added benefit, Valentine says North Carolina farmers could earn carbon credits for making biochar. That would be sold to our rural electric co-ops and our state utilities in a voluntary market that would help offset their requirements for alternative energy. These technologies here in North Carolina are especially exciting because North Carolina has uh, perhaps more than our fair share of native talent. In the technologies that we would use to convert biomass into biofuels, biomass electricity, heat, or biochar. It's my great hope that we will also couple that technological know-how with folks who understand agriculture to expand the work statewide. Improving poor soil, reducing carbon in the atmosphere, developing new farms overseas. That's quite an agenda for a small farm in eastern North Carolina. But as one of only two known farms worldwide testing biochar, devotees are determined to succeed in proving this burning hot commodity really works. It's ancient wisdom as far as I'm concerned. For more information on biochar and the North Carolina Farm Center, visit our website at unctv.org slash ncnow.